G'day, Nathan from Aussie Acker here again. This is uh, part two of looking at uh, doing a turret to uh, a roof and uh, looking at the solution using the AutoCAD architecture roof object. Uh, just recapping quickly, we've got our roof uh, in which I've sort of cut an arbitrary line. Uh, there's a couple of extra little uh, vertices just to bring this uh, gutter line to meet with this other gutter line here. Um, we have two, uh, a separate roof for the turret section. I'll uh, just turn off these things here. And it's positioned correctly, so these two roofs meet at that point. That's a point there and that's a point there. And they tie together. I did actually have a look. Um, so this is a turret at a slightly different angle and constructionally it might be a little bit better that uh, this hip lands with this hip so that the water is shedding off. The one that I've actually done, uh, without getting too technical on construction issues, uh, this water goes straight into that hip, which might not be uh, the best choice for construction wise, but we won't worry about that at the moment. Looking at the AutoCAD architecture, I'm remembering that we've resolved the eaves so that the eaves, uh, this roof being at 45 degrees, this roof being at 35 degrees, Maybe I might do that so you can see them a little better. Okay, and what we want to do is how do we create a nice, neat join such that it looks like it's supposed to look like. Obviously, this is not going to be any good for plans because you're going to have all these extra lines that are not wanted. So what do we do? We've created a building section and we created a, a look down and we created a line that forms and shows us how these two roofs join. Now we've created two uh, mass element objects and very quickly I'll draw, a, oops, very easy to do, is draw a polyline, close that and convert to mass element. Uh, yes, I don't need the line work. Yes, let's type in the dark. 6,000 will do, and it creates a mass element. Now, I've done them earlier. There's a couple I've cooked up. And they just need to cover. Now, the idea is what I'm going to use these for is to cover one side or the other of each object. Either this main roof or this smaller roof. Okay, remembering that the join between the two follows this line that we created from the object. Okay, so how do we do it? Go back, the secret model explorer, it's a command that Autodesk seems to have thought to hide from you. It's found nowhere on the ribbon until you've actually created one and then it appears, so I'm not sure what the deal is there, but anyway, who knows what Autodesk does. I go up to here and I create new grouping and it says down here in the command line, select elements to attach. I'm going to select the main roof as a start. Let's just, I'm just pulling that, keeps going back behind the window. Uh, oh okay, and, and it's sorry, it asks where the location, now this is just a locator item. I, I don't see any logic in knowing where to put this yet, but there may very well be an object. And you'll see a change over here. And if I click on this mass element, you'll see that's that location point that we just made. How are we going for time? Okay, good. Now, if I just move this object out the way, the roof object is gone, disappeared. You can see this has absolutely replaced it, but it actually is the same shape as the roof object. Now, if I go on here, I've got some buttons. I can add an object, attach elements, and I can detach elements. You might have come across the model explorer useful for doing site uh, uh, site works basically where you create a drape object with a sloping site and you add it and deduct objects I'm going to use it for the roof tool now this one here allows me to edit in place and so I can go back to the roof object so the beauty of this is that I still have the roof object to work with okay so if, if something does change I haven't lost my original uh, roof object 
Okay, now up here I've got finish, so I'm just going to finish that. Now I'm going to bring up the Model Explorer again, and I'm going to look here, and that's our roof. You can see the mass group is made up of a roof. All right. Now I'm just going to undo that. Uh, go to the roof, and I'm going to see how I have to have that deselected to get options up. So if you haven't got any options coming up here, just gave me a hard time a few minutes ago. You need to unselect this, and then you can uh, open this. Now I want to attach an element. Uh, now what I'm going to attach is the the minus. I'm going to attach this element, the one on the outside. Okay, and that you can see it becomes grey. And so if we have a quick look at that, we've got this massive blob on the edge. Now, unselect everything, go back to the Explorer and look at this roof blob. Go and right click on that, Operation Subtractive. Alright, and we look at the mass element now, and you'll see that if we could zoom in, I can't, you'll see that the edge has changed to be a lot neater. And that's probably not going to be completely obvious until we have a look over here and you'll see that now my roof object traces our connection point between the two roofs perfectly okay go back to our model explorer new grouping add now uh, this time I'm going to do a bit different I'm going to add both objects location well let's do it out there possibly you want those two to be in a different location now let's open our model explorer that keeps ducking behind. Now I can't do anything. Can I? <laughs> Unselect, make sure it's not selected. Mass group. And one thing I can do is I can rename. So I can say main roof. And I can rename this and say turret. I can say that's my roof. This I want to minus a subtraction. It's a subtraction. If I go back. Whoa, look at that. And it's cut my roof. Now, the intuitive among you will immediately see what's going to happen. Or oh, you can see it there already. I now have a roof object that's doing exactly, exactly what I want it to do. There's no extra lines. If we have a look in uh, plan view, I can take out this uh, pink bit, which was sitting down there anyway. And it's following, I can create a mass element style that's a roof and I can do all my uh, dashed lines it's probably not going to do a dashed line at the moment let's have a look, plan view, by block line type um, yeah, etc. I'll, I'll play with that later and show you how to get that to all happen but there it is, my mass element, my complete object it looks like it's uh, one object. Now again, the beauty of it is, is that if, if this turret changes, you want it to add 16 sides instead of whatever I've got there, you can go back in and edit it after the event. And then you'll have a perfect roof and it's editable. It's not dumb slabs where you have to uh, miter and do all that bits and pieces. The main part of it is done for you. I'm sure that actually mitering, I, I'm pretty done with slabs to be honest, but I'm sure that mitering would be just as much work as what I've shown here. The beauty is of course that we've still got our, our main object and we can do some things with it. I'm going to come back and visit this one and uh, there's some interesting things happening here. There's uh, how to do a gable end on a roof that's just got a straight edge right the way along and it's got a gable here and a gable here, they're not actually full gables there, whatever you want to call them, Dutch gables, and also this roof that continues down here, I've got overlap happening here, all things that we thought the roof object couldn't do. So come back and uh, we'll share some more good tips and tricks for the AutoCAD architecture roof object. Cheers guys. <laughs>